Okay, welcome back to part two, which is the remarkable two in practice. You've probably been frustrated and you're like, ah, oh, how do I get around the, the nuances, the pet peeves of this user interface? This is an amazing device. And there are lots of things I'm gonna talk about that you just want it to be solved and we all know that the the release of software updates isn't frequent and they don't really address the things that you want quick enough I'm just going to show you the DDVK hack for the first time and it's really accelerated my productivity if you want to level up this section is for you the first section is annoyances with the touch interface out of the box you get a menu system whether you're left or right-handed because I'm left-handed I have issues with certain aspects of it let's focus on the toggle menu top corner you're going to use that button to access the, the the functionality of the pen and the navigation but when you want to draw past that well on top of that menu you're going to have to close that toggle button down imagine this if your your if your hands at the bottom and you want to get rid of that menu you're going to have to go in all the way up touch it toggle button and come back to, to finish the writing okay it is annoying with the ddvk hack is that it incorporates gestures so if you swipe anywhere downwards or in the middle anywhere and i'll show you here it flicks the menu off and that is just so so welcoming because i don't have to go all the way to the top i can just go sw slide down slide down and it vanishes okay so that's brilliant second irritation was because i'm left-handed the top corner of the opposite part of the toggle has a cross and because I I move my hand across okay the, my top knuckle when I'm writing at the top would hit that close the document button that was really frustrating because at some point I would have done all my notes and I'd gone to the top maybe put a date there and accidentally hit that close button now with a hack that that cross goes and so I, I no longer have that issue I can easily rest my hand on the top corner with the peace of mind knowing that it wouldn't close number three undoing and redoing there's sometimes you just can't be bothered to put the menu back up sometimes the toggle button that you have you've got the menu closed but would it be great if you had for example I'm going to show you now I'm going to draw something wouldn't it be great if you had gestures to be able to do undos and redos as an example here. So I've just done a scribble. I'm going to do, and look, as you can see, the menu's not there. I'm going to go swipe left at the top to undo. It goes. Swipe right to the top. Redo. Gestures. Who'd have known? Okay, now on to pet peeves about the pen. I get that having an eraser at the top it saves saves a lot of time but actually what it what it annoys me is that I have to twist it okay and you know you could say Chris that's just layman you just twist it and get on with it because over the course of I know a day you have to switch it over okay and it gets a bit weighty I would have preferred actually to have a, a, a button on the pen that is an eraser functionality so I can just do that I mean alternatively I could use my other my finger just to switch between but I really don't want to have to think about it and it should all be just automatic now the other thing that I would like to see is I commonly use two pens the fine liner and the highlighter wouldn't it be great if you had well if you could have another pen that was set specifically to fine liner and the other one for the highlighter yeah, that'd be great again because I don't really I don't really want to go through the menu it's just me so the next section is the lack of UI utilities um, visuals what I want to see and you can see it here I would in the, in the out of the box you don't get the time of day you don't you don't get a calendar you don't get the battery indicator uh, I mean what I mean by these they're not instantly visible you, you can have and actually the battery indicator you you will have to go to the the navigation page to see in the bottom and also I want to know how many pages there are in my document my notebook instantly so with with the the DDVK if you just click put the menu on like this in the you have the option to have to extend the UI okay and in here I'll show you 
is that you can include the battery on and off and you see the bottom right there it changes it so it includes the battery um, it doesn't give you the percentage but it gives you an indication roughly of how how much top top it is the time is in the bottom right now I'm in the UK and the time seems to be perfect but there is um, ways of if you're in a different time zone of updating through the command window to be able to change your your time zone so that's brilliant now the other thing is there's no calendar and look I get it that one thing the reason why I bought it is because I don't want to be tethered to the internet and I want to just have my thoughts write it down but the other thing is not having a calendar is frustrating because you can't just look forward and I don't really want to go and get my phone or go to my computer outlook all the time so this is not necessarily the DDVK but I've used a custom template uh, application to upload a 2021 calendar and as you can see what I've done is I can access it through the calendar 2021 brilliant now the next thing is I want to know how many pages are in my document now why is this so important so this is what you get normally in the menu now if if you've got a document of like 50 pages okay we're gonna go and find that the only way that I know about is by going to the page overview so this is one button two button okay and you can scroll three I suppose touches or you can go go to go to page and enter so that's like four steps enter the page five steps okay click button six okay that was six button presses now with the DDVK you go to if the extra UI is on on the on the menu itself it shows you how many pages up front but also if you click on that number you can type it in and go and how simple is that you know, that really cut down that the number of steps the next thing I'm going to talk about now is text searching now this this is one thing that is still lacking the two biggest text searching bugbears is you can't search your PDFs or your EPUB content the other text search issue that you have is that when I bought the Remarkable 2 I would have hoped that when I was writing my notes it would automatically convert it into structured text and this is not the case the, the way it works is that if you want to get um, your writing converted in structured text you have to send it by email and there's an option called convert to text and send now that's frustrating right because you have to set, you don't really want to send it by email but I'll tell you what's happening behind the scenes and it's interesting because I was researching it and what convert text to screen actually let's try it out okay look so the reason why those ellipses are are changing is because it's actually sending the writing the date the screen to a server um, an application called MyScript which is a really good program that's leading edge and it converts the text that you've written sorry your hand scribes into text and it's not bad honestly I'm, I'm looking at it now and it's done a pretty decent job but the issue is if you're gonna get hold of that structured text you have to send it to an email <laughs> you know, click on it and that's a pain right that's a real pain but what I would do I suggest you know remarkable if you're listening out there what would be great is if you can get the SDK offline and do the do the conversion on the on the tablet itself that would be fantastic and just to let you know guys I'm going to play around with that because I can do that um, offline and I know there's an SDK out there that you can try for free if you're a programmer companion software and integration so if you don't know by now the Remarkable 2 has a mobile app for Android or iPhone and a desktop app okay so the shortcomings of the companion software is that the biggest biggest thing there's a problem is you cannot upload custom templates and on, on that note even but what you want is the ability to put them together the templates like even paint shop 
and just upload it and do it automatically. And it, these programs that come Remarkable, it doesn't do that. And it's a major showstopper for some people. And it was one for me until I figured out the best solution, the Remarkable Connection utility that I use to, on, on the, in the description below. Cannot edit your send email list. So that's a real, that's an annoying problem because if you are sending content or journal, you know, documents to lots of people, that list grows and it gets a bit unwieldy. And the only way you can do um, edit it is by accessing the file and editing it that way. The ability to download all your documents so that you can have a backup offline, that, that doesn't happen. You have to export things um, individually and that's sort of a real pain for, for some people. Uh, again, I've got around this by being able to use a, an offline utility, the RCU, and this supports all my needs so far. Another big shortcoming, some people like myself would like to be able to store your documents in different um, clouds or different applications, for example, like Google Drive, or OneNote or Evernote. Out of the box, that's not possible and there are I've done actually videos on how to integrate with OneNote by using the send email functionality and also to Microsoft Teams. So check those out up here for the link. And um, yeah, th another thing is, suppose it would be great if I could send to Remarkable using my, my iPhone. So if you're listening to Remarkable, that's a really cool feature. Writing experience quirks. Okay, so the biggest one, that I found it is is a jagged line. Some people want it to be smooth, but that's not a deal breaker for me because I, I use it to take notes and write, so I don't often draw straight lines. And the other um, strange writing experience is that sometimes, it's only happened once or twice, that when I put in a new nib, something strange happens. So, you know when you uh, bring your, your pen to the surface of the Remarkable tablet, even before I touch it, just say I'm one or two centimeters away, it starts writing. And this is obviously a real pain because you want to be able to write uh, accurately. So by the time, before I've even touched the, the canvas, it's already scribbling around and it looks really messy and I was like freaked out by this. So I thought the first option was to restart the, the Remarkable. Now that didn't work and that actually again freaked me out because I thought oh does this mean my pen or is it the actual Remarkable 2 itself is busted and we all know that this customer support whilst they do respond I think the the lead time for getting replacements is is a long time which is frustrating okay finding documents aha now this is something that you guys really need to know about out of the box um, you can scroll through the sort by mode okay so i'm in the my files you got last updated tap it size and alphabetical so the biggest challenge that i've got is because i've got over now 200 notebooks with varying sizes of pages between 1 and 60 okay how on earth are you meant to navigate through several pages of documents i've been able to deal with that because i thought laterally and i thought there must be a better way to be able to start searching for the document that you're interested in. Here are the biggest bugbears. What if you wanted to see the recently used documents quickly, okay? You can't really do that. The only options you have is by last updated, okay? Whereas using the DDVK, what you can do, scroll down to the middle, here, click in my files, there's this new menu that comes up and it shows you the most recently used documents and you can click on it. Fantastic, right? If you're in a notebook, if you want to do that, you, if you do two finger swipe up, it will also bring the latest documents that you've used. This could be EPUBs, this could be um, notebooks, it could be PDFs and it's just fantastic, okay? So again, it brings it to another level of usability. You don't have to go and search through that horrible search menu to find it. Being able to switch 
from your last used document, okay? Again, you could go to the, 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 the My Files or the, the Notebook search page and you can look the last updated, but wouldn't it be great, and I'm showing you now, is that if you do, we're using the DDVK, um, you scroll down with two fingers, and I've, I was obviously at the calendar beforehand, and you do it again, it flicks back and forth, isn't that great? That section was uh, just to overcome those um, finding documents in general. The next section is issues with navigating within documents. As of today, there is a new release of the Remarkable software 2.6, and it fixes this issue that I'm talking about, which apparently is the, the pinch and zoom, zoom in and out of PDFs, because the functionality that came out of the box was horrendously and infuriatingly slow and clunky. But actually, the new 2.6 update allows you to use your finger to scroll that viewport, okay? So let's move on to the next one. So accessing table of contents is clunky in a PDF, okay? It would be great, and the only way that you can do that is by, if you go to, to page overview and you go to the table of content. What would be great is if there was a, a menu button that goes straight to the table of contents. Uh, okay, the ability to move to an index quickly is not possible. And when I mean index, I suppose I, I'm talking about a table of contents. What this refers to is, for me, is a notebook, a journal, if you will. Um, the difficulty about having a journal, a handwritten journal, is that you need to essentially create your own index, okay? And that's okay. I'm, I'm, I, I've hinted that I use custom templates, but the real power of creativity that I'm using is something called the bullet journal methodology by Ryder Carroll. Go check it out on Amazon, buy his book because it's phenomenal and applying it to this digital tablet has just set my world on fire. Literally creativity has gone through the roof and the way, to just to summarize, the way the bullet journal methodology works is that you have a living index and you're, you have to put the pages, the, the page index down. What's lacking on a digital out the box note is not being able to go to your index quickly. And the only way that you can do that is if the index is at the front is let's just, or not at the front, it's somewhere, it could be anywhere. Um, you have to go down there to go to page overview, scroll through, you could have a, a notebook of 60 or 70 pages and index could be several places. But my point is I've used the DDVK hack now to figure out the best way to navigate a, a large notebook and what I've done is there's this bookmarks um, functionality which you can hit, see here and in this case if we go to my my projects widget so on the top left corner is a bookmark which you can just easily put on and off if we just quickly go to my my work journal my notebook here you can see that I've got an index, page one is the index, and I've got various other monthly tasks. There you go, I use that. And then something that I'm working on, Enterprise Architecture, another bookmark, perfect. And that's how you use um, the index versus bookmarks. And fortunately, DDVK hack has this on the bookmarks, the last page, which is actually really useful because you want to go to the last page. Pet peeves, quality of the materials. It's, question, you know, it's questionable. I have to say, whilst it is luxurious in its feel and it's metallic, it does feel fragile. And I would say if you drop it, something bad would happen to I think you get deforming and you know from what I've heard you can ask um, Remarkable to send you a new one but it's it's down to their discretion and it is yeah it just it just feels fragile but what I would say is because it's not a glass surface and I'm not sure if it would shatter but it, it, it feels pretty robust but I, what I would say is look after your your uh, remarkable tool. power button feels flimsy and when I'm pressing it in fact it feels like it might get stuck and that is 
that is a problem. So just be aware with that, okay? The, the Marker Plus or the Marker itself, it, it's a really good feeling pen, but I've, I've heard that sometimes people have got broken pens, so the quality is questionable. All I can suggest is you take care of it and not press too hard on the nibs. Treat your your gadgets well and you know you'll get lots of mileage out of it. Yeah, there's a potential I think to lose the, the pen because the magnet, while it, it slots down, you know, solidly you know, on the side, it's really easy to lose this thing. If you're a ro road warrior or you're someone who like a student who puts just dump stuff in the bag. I think you're going to lose it, and I, I certainly would myself. Next section is hardware nice to have. Could you have the backlight? I think it'd be great to have a backlight only if it's you know if I'm in the dark and I'm reading in bed. But it's not it's not a, um, a showstopper. But of course, if you do have a backlight, it's going to drain the battery more. So there are things to consider. It's a nice to have. Now the other nice to have, I think it would be great if you had a wireless charging unit on it, because you know having or having some sort of a magnetic kind of attachment which can easily slot on, I suppose, a bit like your your MagSafe on your your eye your MacBooks. So what I will say, guys, now that you've gone through this with me, the the, the pet peeves and how to level up using the DDVK hack um, and the custom templates tool, you need custom templates to be able to practice the bullet journal methodology. Okay, without that, you're kind of stuck and you have to create templates by drawing them yourself, copying it, which is highly inefficient, and it, it, it's not the best use of the functionality that you have here. I mean, I'm very much a believer of the Pareto law, where you, you put 20% of the effort in and get 80% of the outputs. At the moment, what I would say is, if you guys use the Remarkable 2 out of the box as it is, you're putting 80% in effort in, this is my, my belief, you put 80% of the effort in and get 20% output of the results back, which is, is not great, okay? It should be really intuitive to use. And as I've, I've shown you, I think with the DDVK hack, it will, it will bring it to the, to the max. And I truly believe that. Obviously, the caveat is that you will be breaking the warranty, and if you're not comfortable with that, then this is something you will have to weigh the pros and cons up, because I believe Remarkable 2, as such, it's a great hardware device, but the software just falls short of, of a lot of things, which the, the online community like DDVK has, has managed to produce something that works really well, in my opinion. Summary, if you're not prepared to accept all these shortcomings, I think you'll be in a constant love-hate relationship with the Remarkable 2, okay? Sometimes you just have to take that extra step and have a belief in the, in the open community and, and upload that patch, um, the DDVK hack. Or, you know, alternatively, live with it and you just have to bite, bite your bottom lip and, and just take it as, as granted. Because it's still a great. So now that you've seen all of these, the ins and outs, the, the 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 system itself, and my usage of it over the four months, I think the two things to to note is the biggest limitations are potentially offline backup, and not being able to use anything else but the the remarkable cloud, and also custom templates. That's they are so key. Um, the custom templates are so key for ensuring that your creativity. Is unhampered and also the, the, the UI usability aspect uh, with the DDVK hack it unleashes your creativity and productivity by ensuring your workflows are tight and quick and like I mentioned so rather than you spending so much time having to battle against the UI it just makes sense to be able to use use it as you want I'll let you decide now whether you want to buy the Remarkable 2 or if you want to keep it. And, you know, put in the, some of the comments in, put in the comments below what you think, what you think you're going to do with your Remarkable 2. You're going to keep it or you're going to give it back. What are your biggest bugbears? What are your pet peeves with it? And how are you overcoming the, the issues that you've got with it? And what would you like to see? Um, and if you want to leave a comment to say, Chris, I'd really like you to talk more about this part of the video or something else, 
please leave a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, click on the subscribe button and click on that notifications bell so that you can get updated as soon as the video is published. And I will leave you with this so that you can digest it for all it's worth. And there's another video here and here that you can also check out. So please do. See you later.